So my name is Joel Gioacchino. I come from Italy originally. My name is Eloge Butera. I, uh, I was born in Rwanda. My name is Adi Rafika Dean. I was born in Sergoda, Pakistan. My name is Mirais Nasat. I'm originally from Afghanistan and now an Afghan Canadian. Um, I've been a survey scholar in the last year, 2011-2012. And um, as a survey scholar, I was working um, on a on developing my the organizations that I've been sort of building called Recrea. We are a network of young people from different parts of the world and our mission is to make sure that young people are integrated in how uh, community projects are thought of, designed and implemented. We achieve our mission by designing participatory research pro programs that help um, sort of young people build a vision for change and then utilize their knowledge and experience to then inform projects that will be developed in the community. I was a survey scholar in the year 2009-2010. I am a trained in law. I uh, currently work in the Parliament of Canada for Senator and Retired General Romeo Dallaire. I was a part of the Survey Scholars Program in the 2011-2012 year. Most recently I was working at a food bank where I was managing their programs and services, working with clients directly who were in poverty, immigrants and refugees, folks who had lost their jobs. So my background is in human rights and I use that to advocate for my clients for greater rights in employment, disability, uh, and human rights in general. I was a Soviet scholar here in 2009-2010. Uh, right now, I'm an international development professional working in Afghanistan. The survey year came after my first long and real visit to, to Rwanda. And my uh, research subject was the contribution that law can make in enhancing or uh, uh, facilitating reconciliation in Rwanda, but in other societies that have had to carry a heavy burden of history like we do um, and this was a safe space to do it because they had 12 very engaged people with whom to exchange. My background is in human rights and my interest in coming back to Canada was working closely with Aboriginal communities and it was this opportunity gave me the chance to look at that in more detail. So I was able to spend my year researching human rights issues, but also ending up to focus on the Aboriginal affairs, uh, part of human rights and dignity. So when the opportunity came up to do my survey project and go up north to Labrador to follow an Innu elder into the mountains for a month and do this journey of 175 kilometers, it it completely changed my experience and when I came back I felt like I had so much more to give back and so much greater understanding of what it means to be Aboriginal in Canada and the challenges that Aboriginal people have faced. Um, for me the survey experience was uh, a career in personal transformation. It provided an opportunity for me to broaden my personal and professional uh, skills, knowledge, and abilities. And what it has really meant for me in the field now working on international issues in Afghanistan has been a set of skills that has improved my confidence, it has improved my ability to become a better leader, and at the end of the day to uh, be a better servant of the people, something that I'm passionate about and uh, working with communities working on complex development challenges, all um, those interventions um, and those results that I have achieved over the years would not have been possible without the SOFI learning experience. A very powerful year and a bit since I then stayed along and I've been living at the SOFI house for a few months, a uh, few months longer. Um, I think that overall I can say that I, it has been a powerful work on myself beyond any other sort of professional goals or project that I worked on. And um, definitely a, a process of becoming more vulnerable in the context of living with people from different parts of the world and trying to understand and explore even deeper what does it mean to be 
me in relationship to others and so how my sort of personality and the core of who I am comes across in all different types of situations with all different types of people. What I find leadership to be, uh, when you're young, there's always the temptation to know everything or to feel that you know everything because you have a lot of energy and you want to spend it on whatever cause you give to yourself. But we live in a society that doesn't value doubt. We live in an environment where uh, strength and the ability to push your ideas uh, forcefully is uh, glorified. The value of doubt uh, it becomes obvious when you live with t 12 very smart and very brilliant and very energetic people. Uh, and none of your ideas go as smoothly as you can't run over them with your charm and energy and charisma. You need to justify every aspect of uh, uh, your ideas and soon when you really take the time to think about them you realize that they are not all that you make them out to be in your own head. What I learned is to always listen. Listen and pay attention. Uh, because um, there is more to be learned by asking questions than uh, throwing out their uh, statements. So I think traditionally when we think of leadership we think of strong leaders who uh, from the outside seem like they are they're strong, they're gonna get things done, action-oriented, uh, I think all of those things are important, but I think 21st century skills also need to include compassion and empathy. When we miss those two in the world of leadership, we can't think of the way that other people will feel when we enact certain policies, or the way that certain groups will feel, or the way that people will be marginalized. Uh, I think there's people who get left out of the conversation when we don't consider uh, empathy and compassion in the work that we do, uh, whether it's human rights or the environment, sustainability, uh, whatever the issue might be. Uh, I think understanding how other people will feel is going to be a 21st century skill that people will need to employ in order to build a better world, in order to build healthier policies so that we can protect both our natural environment as well as, uh, as, well as people. A leader always um, works to uh, serve others. It is uh, um, a life spent in compassion, it's a life spent in sacrifices, and it's a life that requires hard work. Um, all of these lessons combined, whether it's empathy, compassion, or hard work, uh, were um, demonstrated in the achievements of many amazing um, leaders that uh, we met here, from Senator Dallaire uh, to Paul Martin and to President Clinton to Governor General Mikhailja and many amazing other um, leaders that we met. So I think all of those uh, insights, the advice and, and, and the inspiration that we drew from these amazing individuals, including our very own Desiree Mikro, I think it helped me to reflect on my personal uh, strengths and personal weaknesses and to understand that to become a well-rounded leader, uh, a, uh, a transformative leader and one who's able to work together with um, individuals, with other groups, uh, one needs humility, one needs a vision, one needs to have a dream and in order to pursue that dream, uh, leave no stone unturned. Um, well, my dream is, as always, I have always experienced war. So for me, my dream is a peaceful society wherever I work. Uh, and I think for millions and millions of people around the world, peace is a still an illusion. Uh, and so to be part of that process, is to be a catalyst for peace, I think to me the end result and the end dream is really peace. We are far from that. Many societies are far from that. And I think we need a lot of uh, advocates to really work towards a peaceful society. 
um, so that one day every country can have uh, a society like Canada. My survey experience in one word, I would say intense. <laughs> I think that's the best word. It was very intense. Beautiful. Intense. Why? Because from day one, debate, debates, debates, debates on peace in the world from gender, from equality, from justice. Uh, it was basically nine full months of uh, intellectual uh, boot camp. Magical. <laughs> and the, I don't describe too many things in my life as magical. I mean, I think that was the first time I used the word when describing an experience. Maybe I've used it before, but uh, it was definitely a magical experience. Getting to know 14 people in a house as magnificent as this one, uh, that was where at the very root of it uh, is the philosophy of Jean Sauvé. It, it can't get better than that. I mean, I was a very fortunate girl and I, I recognize that and, and have, um, have always remembered that. So I've, all, I've always thought that if there's ways that I can give back to the program for what it gave to me, I will take every opportunity to do that. Um, but leaving at the end of the day was probably the hardest thing <laughs> at the way house. I think there's just such great relationships and friendships that you build over the course of the year that are very hard to leave. But, but at the end of the day, you take the absolute best that you get from the program and continue to apply it in life beyond those years. I mean, that's why it's here, right? It's not just for that one year, it's for the rest of your life.